Well, we're now here with Michael Spress uh, from uh, Kia, uh, the head of marketing, uh, Kia North America. So first of all, congratulations on 20 years of uh, in the market here in the U.S. A yeah. big, big milestone for Kia, right? It, it really is. If you think back in 1994 when the brand first entered the market, we came in with two vehicles, the Sophia and the Sportage. And now 20 years later, we've got... 12 products in our lineup and we're looking to add more to grow our brand yeah the sportage the one the only survivor from, from the first uh, times huh? exactly yeah so but um it, it's been very interesting with kia because obviously at the beginning like anything else in life actually not only the automotive industry things are hard and in this industry even more i think right yes exactly you you bring up a great point to I me mean, in the beginning we brought in some vehicles that we that had good fuel economy but uh, maybe not so great quality and the quality perception is the issue that we've been trying to overcome the most particularly over the last 5 years because in the last 5 years we've introduced 14 all new or redesigned products the quality's gotten much better, backed by our 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. In fact, J.D. Power ranks us number six in yeah. initial quality. But still, there's a lot of people out there who think the Kia of old and not the Kia of new. Even though you have sold, what, 5 million vehicles in the past uh, 20 years? And 1 million in the first 10 years? Yep. Is that correct? And then, like, the rest in the past... But really, in the past five years, like the, the brand has exploded with, like, new product and all that and, and the quality. But... I mean, that's, that makes your job really, really difficult. Eh? Yeah. I mean, not that convinces people, I mean. Yes, exactly. I mean, the, the introducing uh, new products all the time, like we've done over the last five years, first with the Soul and then the Rio and the Forte and the Optima and the Sportage and Sorento and Cadenza and K900, each one of them, it's, it's changing the perceptions but it's slowly. It's it's kind of one person at a time. And our our the people that have bought the product are huge advocates for yeah. us. It's very exciting to see people come and tell us and tell their friends what a great product it is. So the first step into that was the ten year guarantee, and and that's like a very big commitment for any company. Like to put that kind of support back that your products with that. It's it's strong. But then like the day to day thing, that's like what takes time. Yes, absolutely. And, and time is ac exactly right. It's, it's going to take time. We know we're going to get there. We know that, uh, again, our quality is as good, if not better, than most manufacturers. It's just going to take a little bit of time for consumers to recognize yeah, and that. And the value is also amazing because like, when you add like, the product, the guarantee, what you get into the cars, I mean, you are like, including a lot of standard features that were just like five, ten years ago, like considered luxury brand, luxury items for a car, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, some of the uh, the new features that we've introduced on the K900, which is our most luxurious vehicle in the market right now, we've now taken some of those features and put them on the all new Sedona, which is now just coming out. But this just now consumers' expectations of just because you know there's a, a you know a new technology comes out, why shouldn't we share that with everybody? <laughs> why should yeah. it just be on a luxury vehicle? So that's the approach we're taking and uh you, you mentioned something like people are expecting everything i mean like the new iphone it came out i mean like it has a camera that 10 years ago would have cost you thirty thousand exactly. dollars now it's in your pocket right so and that translates to everything and in cars with that huge competition that it's out there it's, it's a it's a big big challenge yeah it, it is absolutely and what we're our approach is that we want to put technology into the vehicles that's usable technology we don't want to put it in just for the sake of saying hey we have this we can do if, it yeah. If, yeah if we know consumers aren't going to use it because then that just drives up the cost and then we would move away from our value positioning and that's where we're still true to our, our original DNA and that's offering a great value to consumers yeah and another area that uh, Kia has expanded in the past uh, few years it's uh, motorsports I mean and you've been pretty successful there too much faster than with the production cars yes exactly we got into motorsports five years ago initially uh, in the Continental Grand Am series with our Forte Coupes and then uh, one of our race car drivers uh, we were at a meeting and he, he drove it on a track in Las Vegas so he drove the Optima yeah. and said this is the vehicle that you should really be yeah. racing and so we got into the Pirelli World Challenge and this year just a couple weeks ago we won the overall manufacturer's championship. So we beat, you know, the, 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 
Porsches, the Fords, the Chevys. That's amazing. It, it, it is amazing, and it's it just shows how far the brand has come, and it really is great from a quality and durability and reliability standpoint to show people, wow, if you can do this well on the track, imagine what it can do in everyday yeah. driving. So another argument to convince those people who are still with those bad ideas from, from the past, and like, it really, I mean, has changed completely, and uh, you said like, The JD Power initial quality study gives you about puts you up in sixth place. Yeah, in sixth place amongst mainstream brands. And then yeah. like under that, they're like brands that are like really, really high end. Absolutely. And you would never think about that. Absolutely. And that's and that's again part of my job is making sure that that message gets out so people are aware when they're shopping us. So obviously you go out there and talk to a lot of your customers and all of that. What what has been the reaction for I mean what Have you heard any particular thing that they told you, okay, oh, this made me change my perception about Kia? Like, is there anything that you can recall? Yeah, a lot of it is um, through word of mouth. It's, you know, one person on the street buying a vehicle, and then the neighbors kind of look at it and say, oh, so you bought a Kia? And then the neighbor says, yeah, and let me tell you why. And they walk around the vehicle and show their friends and their neighbors all of the great features and attributes. And then they, the end is, oh, and this is what I paid. <laughs> and so as the neighbor, you're looking at the new Kia, yeah. and you're looking at the car you just bought, and you're like, jeez. I just spent over I, I, $20,000. I, I, exactly, exactly. In some cases, it's that big of a difference, yeah, right? Yeah, if you, if you look at the K900 uh, feature to feature, I mean, it's it's a twenty to $30,000 yeah. value versus other vehicles in the luxury space. Incredible. So um, now Kia has, uh, obviously, they build a plant here in the United States, yes. uh, which uh, you're producing there, the Optima and the Sorento. Sorento. Yep. And now I heard you're expanding to Mexico now? Yes, exactly. So just a couple of weeks ago, we announced that uh, we're going to begin producing uh, new Kias in uh, in Monterrey, Mexico in 2016. Oh, Monterrey. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we've really, um, here in the U.S., we've been capacity constrained. We want to grow uh, as a brand. We see a lot of opportunity here for us. And um, so we'll be able to source vehicles uh, from Mexico. And it also, though, allows us to establish a network in Mexico and then also export vehicles to other Central and South American countries. Yeah. And uh, Mexico obviously has become one of the big, big uh, participants in the players in the, in the automotive industry worldwide. I mean, everybody's coming there. It's the Germans, the Japanese now, uh, Kia. So uh, there are no any issues, right? Like the, the quality is like as good as, as you can build a car here or in Korea. Yeah, uh, that, that's our assumption. We'll, we, we'll know once we start producing them. But yeah, the assumption is that we're going to get the great quality. I mean, the quality standards that we put in place are the same around the world. So our expectation is that every plant will produce to the same level of quality. Absolutely. So uh, we're here in California for like the new, new, new two vehicles, the Sedona and the Soul EV. I mean, the Soul has already been into the market, but now a different variation of that car. Great cars again. Yeah, they absolutely are. The Soul EV is um, really going to serve as a great halo vehicle. It's the uh, center point for our clean mobility program, which really is to convey to consumers that we're an environmentally conscious company. We're looking to the future, and we're seeing what's going on um, with with gasoline and diesel and and you know fuel cells and all those sorts of things. And so this is really going to help us lead uh, into the future. But then we're also launching our new Sedona, which traditionally has been a minivan. We're now calling it a multi-purpose vehicle because the design is very CUV-ish, but it has all of the yeah, functionality it look of like the a, minivan. Look at the boxy minivan right. anymore. Exactly. So we're really excited. This kind of completes the, the transformation of the brand um, that we started back in 2009 with the Soul. So it's the last vehicle, but Next week, we're going to introduce the You're new like Sirona at <laughs> Paris, so we start the, the new transformation. Well, Michael, thank you very much again. I always uh, very interested talking to you, and congratulations on the 20th anniversary again, and uh, hopefully many, many more years of uh, success for Kia in the U.S. Great. Thanks, Fabio. Thank you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.